Let the sail out. See you. Winter, King Sirbjorn ordered the construction of a new longhouse. The splendid hall you now see at Thornburg. To build this longhouse, he employed the help of 20 men. I was among them, as was Kravi, the strongest and stoutest man I had ever seen. We set about felling trees and hewing wood for timber. Kravi was the fastest of us, dropping 41 trees in only two days. On the third day, a spindly man called Nar was near upon telling his first tree. It hacked it all the way around like some mad animal. When the tree fell, it did so in a direction he had not wished. Straight down upon Frani. Nar called out, but it was too late. Save it for later. Ha! is lost in hell by now. They will have the lost souls of the dead to answer to. Soma. Eivor, you're still with me through all this. Do not think I'll forget. We all need someone in dark times. Now let's collect Wickman's head. Good. At the first sign of trouble, my crew will jump in. See you, old friend. Can't do this alone. Uh. Ah. Die in agony, back 
Kraut. You can't kill me, Soma. Not truly, for what I am is un... In my name, die for me, die for me! That is no way to call for sacrifices. That love's for yours. That all works. Their lives meant nothing. No land, no riches, no titles. But my name will live on. The reputation of a good man never dies. Your name will soon be a ghost. So be it. The riches I had in life gave me power. To curse me from beyond the grave gives me still more. Though I die, my order lives on elsewhere, everywhere. Yield to us. Give us what we are owed. The trade, the riches, the legacy, all of it. Yield, yield, yield! If your hell is real, I'm glad you'll get to see it. <laughs> Return to camp before I let the burn this heap to the ground. Going forward, I must take care. Houses can be built anew. Crops will return with time, but trust that will take longer to repair. But you have a new friend and ally in me and my clan, Soma. The end of the storm is well in sight. You're right. I know you're right. It's just it's difficult to see that end when you're still in the storm's eye. Eivor, you've been a guiding light. Calling out Galen like that, exposing his treachery, made me sick with a quiet terror. A betrayal like that is already a kind of death. Galen killed himself. Of course. And now I feel somewhat lifted. The weight is almost gone. Even if my heart needs mending. Ah, while I have you, Eivor, I'm reminded. I have this for you. Keep it, knowing you have my highest respect, regard, and trust. My army is yours, should you need it. 
Soma Yalskona. My deepest thanks. And there's something else. As we prepared our assault, Birna had a word with me. We came to a sort of understanding. It may be best if she tells you herself. Until next time, Eivor of the Raven Clan. I hope we will see you in Grandbridge soon. Eivor! Birna, you struck quite a victory today. Don't undercut your own ferocity, Drengir. It was your blade leading the charge. You are indeed something to behold. We all thought hard. And now Grantbridge is yours. You have your home once again. Ah, soon merchants and priests and reeves will run loose in its streets. All of its muddy charms will dwindle. Besides, with no room for me in Soma's heart, my home burned away in a quiet little house fire. Her priority is Grantbridge and the people in it. That is noble, and beyond what I will ever understand. So I've decided I'm of better use elsewhere. With you. In your crew. You want to live with the Raven Clan? And sail and raid with you. If you'll have me. Look at this. Who wouldn't? I'll be happy to have you, Drenga. A relief to these ears. I've already packed my bags. to Rantvi. Let's tell her the good news. Tell me about what you do here. I buy and sell all manner of items. What's more, I am connected to a wide network of other traders, meaning I have access to nearly everything you could want, right here. But I cannot do much of anything if I don't have a place to work. If you can build a place for me, I can get started right away. I have to go. See you soon. Don't be a stranger!
You look well. Word of our growing settlement has reached outside ears. So have a look around. You may see a few new faces. We are allied with the Danes of Granderbridgeshire. Their Jarlskona, Soma, has pledged an oath. Well done, Eivor. These early victories will pay off well. They will. In more than one way, one of Soma's finest fighters, Birna, has pledged her blade to us. She's a powerful fighter and a charming spirit. I think she'll fit in nicely. Glad to have her. Good work. Eivor, a word of note. Someone has set up shop outside. A trader, I believe. When you can, ask him his business here. He seems to represent a larger guild. The child's eyes, or the eyeless children? Eyeless children? No, that cannot be right. Ask him yourself. Day. A new customer. Whether I am or not, I am the one you'll speak with. Randry tells me you are merchants. Ah, hello, hello! Are you the leader of this bustling encampment? We come on behalf of a thousand eyes, vendors of uncommon goods and exotic treasures from all corners of the world. If you need it, we have it. If we don't have it, you don't need it. Such is our pledge. I see. And is this child with you? Child? Child. My friend, you look upon the master of the thousand eyes, the head of our guild, a legend, a hero of the people, and the richest merchant west of the Indus. You look upon Redda. He means you? He does, Eivor Wolfkist. It is a pleasure to meet you at last. How have you come to know me? The Thousand Eyes have one thousand years as well, and word travels fast. And what is it I can do for you, or you for me? It's quite simple. For a fee, I can connect you to a shadow market that stretches from the dunes of Egypt to the moors of England. What sort of fee? It varies with the item, but there is a small hitch. Through this market, all prices are paid in opal. Interesting. What a strange color it has. May I hold it? You may hold it and keep it, Eivor. A gift from Reda for your immeasurable hospitality. Now look here. Browse what wares I have on offer. Excellent choice, and a lucky one too, for nothing in stock lingers very long. My selection changes daily. Now that you are friends with me, you are also a friend of the Thousand Eyes as well. And what does this mean? Observe my outfit, not the scarf I wear. As you travel, you will meet many of my associates clad in these same vestments. These are my people, my other eyes. Seek them out for trade or contracts. Oblige them. And you will earn a tidy sum. And I might even feel inclined to reward you myself. An interesting offer. Good to hear. Now, if you will excuse us, my apprentice has a tent to secure. You're staying for a while, I suppose. Oh, yes, and you needn't even thank me. We would be honored to call this our home. Good day.
tale I do not often tell. There was a clan, little known in the South, composed entirely of warrior women. And I... What? Why you did not stay with them when they asked you to be the king, dog, I will never understand. Get out of here!
In my youth, I remember hearing the story of Kulda, a fierce young woman whose father forbade her from swordplay and raids. Kulda had skills to match or surpass any man in the clan. And so it was that her beloved Garfi asked her aboard his ship. Once again, Kulda's father forbade her to leave, calling her soft and weak and fragile. But Kulda ignored these insults and left. Here. For a full spring, Kulda and Garfi sailed the coast of Frankia, raiding and plundering and taking much silver and riches. Then, in the early Pull weeks of summer, a passing ship... We'll pick up from there. there have you got a contract for me finally someone reliable to get some serious work done remember this person needs to be dead dead not dead adjacent fully dead I bet some opal on your success so don't fail or I'll be bankrupt no pressure. I will see you later, friend. Go with your gods. Run up the sail! Hey, hey, hey. story of how I killed an entire clan single-handedly with the broken hilt of a sword? Too often, dog. More times than any man can count.
Playboy! Who wants us now, Dick? All sail! Run up the sail! There was a man berserker called Kiar Rogos. Kiar had pledged his battle fury to no king or yar, and would give his oath only once each winter, for reasons nobody could fathom. One year, Kiar assisted Fulra. Soon Kiar was often seen in the company of that man. But soon after, word came to Kiar that Alrek had abused his sister. When he asked Tora about this, she told him, it is true, so... When they were away, Kjar slew Alrek and pulled off one of his arms. When he returned to camp, Kjotve asked where his brother was. Kjar shook his head and held out his hand, in which was an arm ring. Your brother bid me give you this ring, Kyotve. Confused, Kyotve took the ring, and with it came the entire bloody arm. Your brother pledged this oath to hell herself, Kyotve. Can't raise the sail yet. And departed. He was never seen in those parts again. <laughs> Drop the mask!
This area is off limits. What's happening?
not be seen in this area. Show me what lies ahead.
Ah! 